dear students in this series of lecture we will be learning about beta and gamma functions and also the properties of beta and gamma functions the first definition that we will be learning is beta function the beta function which is denoted by beta of m comma n is equal to integral 0 to 1 x to the power m minus 1 multiplied with 1 minus x power n minus 1 dx so this integral is known as the beta function and the values of m and n are always positive that is they are greater than 0 so such a function is known as beta function the next definition is gamma function which is denoted by gamma of n and it is equal to integral 0 to infinity e to the power negative x multiplied with x to the power n minus 1 dx for n greater than 0 so such an integral is said to be a gamma function and we can notice that the limit for the beta function is 0 to 1 and the limit for gamma function is 0 to infinity we shall now learn some properties under beta and gamma functions the first property is the recurrence formula of gamma functions the recurrence formula for a gamma function is given by gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n multiplied with gamma of n for all n greater than 0 so this is known as the recurrence formula of a gamma function we shall now prove this recurrence formula by the definition of gamma function we have gamma of n to be equal to integral 0 to infinity e to the power negative x x to the power n minus 1 dx for all n greater than 0 so by the definition of gamma function we know this so let us first mark this as equation 1 now we have to prove this recurrence relation that is gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n gamma of n so in order to prove that first of all in this equation 1 we shall replace this n by n plus 1 so if we put n is equal to n plus 1 in equation 1 what do we get we get gamma of so instead of n we have to replace it by n plus 1 so gamma of n plus 1 is equal to integral 0 to infinity e to the power negative x x to the power now we have to replace n by n plus 1 so x to the power n plus 1 minus 1 dx now in this we can see that this plus 1 and minus 1 gets cancelled and this equa this integral turns to be integral 0 to infinity e to the power negative x x to the power because the uh, plus 1 and minus 1 has got cancelled we will be having x to the power n dx now in order to find gamma of n plus 1 we need to integrate this we will be integrating this by using the method of integration by parts so what is that integration by parts we will be using the formula integral u dv and the formula is it's equal to uv minus integral v du so this integral will be considered as integral u dv and we will be finding u and v and we will substitute here minus integral v du so when we uh, do this we will be getting the solution for integral 0 to infinity e power negative x x bar n dx but for that we should know to choose u and dv so from this what is u and what is dv that we have to choose so in order to choose that we will be making use of i l a t e the concept of i l a t e that is where i stands for inverse function 
and then L stands for logarithmic function, A stands for algebraic function, T stands for trigonometric function and E stands for exponential function. That is, we have to choose U in this order. So, if there is an inverse function, we should first choose that inverse function as U. After that, we have to check out whether there is any logarithmic function. If we don't have an inverse function, we have to check out for logarithmic and that will be chosen as u. And if we don't have a logarithmic, then we have to choose the algebraic function as u. If algebraic function is not there, then trigonometric. And if not, then we have to choose the exponential function as u. So we have to choose u in this order. So now if you see here, we have an algebraic function x to the power n. And we have an exponential function e to the power negative x. So if you check for the order, algebraic function comes first. So u has to be chosen as the algebraic function. So the choice of u is algebraic function first. So u will be equal to, what is the algebraic function here? x to the power is algebraic. So x to the power n will be chosen as u. All the left out remaining will be taken as dv. So, what is left out e to the power negative x dx. So, that has to be taken as dv. So, dv will be equal to e to the power negative x dx. So, this is how we have to make the choice of u and dv. Now, after making the choice of u and dv, in order to substitute in this formula, we should find v and du. To find du, we have to differentiate u. So, what is the differentiation of this with respect to x? It is du by dx is equal to, what is the differentiation of x power n? It will be nx power n minus 1. So, from this we obtain du to be equal to nx power n minus 1. This dx goes this side. And it becomes here, it comes here. That is du is equal to nx power n minus 1 dx. Now from dv equal to e power negative x dx, we have to find v by integrating on both the sides. So when we integrate dv, we obtain v. And that is equal to, what is the integration of e power negative x dx? The integration for e power negative x is negative e to the power negative x by the formula of integration. So, this will be taken as v. So, now we have u, we have v and we also have du. Now, we have to substitute these three quantities in this formula. So, therefore, gamma of n plus 1 is equal to, now this integral has been turned out to be this. So, first is u. What is u? u is x to the power n. And then v. v is negative e power negative x. So I will write that negative sign here. e to the power negative x. After integration, we have to write the limits in brackets. So the limit, lower limit is 0 and the upper limit is infinity. So uv and then in the formula we have a minus. So minus integral. So, whenever we write the integral, we should write the limits also. So, the lower limit is 0 and the upper limit is infinity because it is not integrated still. So, integral v du. What is v? v is negative e to the power negative x. So, uh, this minus and this minus gets multiplied. So, minus into minus becomes plus and we have e to the power negative x. So, v Next, we have du. What is du here? We have du is n x to the power n minus 1 dx. This n is a constant, so I am writing it outside the integral. So, n x to the power n minus 1. So, x to the power n minus 1 dx. So, now we are done with uh, du. So, we have written du also. Now, in the next step, if you see, we have to substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit. So, when we substitute the upper limit, we observe that we have e to the power negative x. So, e to the power negative infinity is 0. 
so upper limit is 0 when you apply the lower limit here you have a x so when you apply 0 here 0 multiplied with e power negative x is also 0 so completely this term becomes 0 when we apply the upper limit and the lower limit now because this has become 0 the left out term will be this so what do you have here you we have n here so n multiplied with integral 0 to infinity e to the power negative x x to the power n minus 1 dx but what is this integral from equation 1 we know that it is the gamma function gamma of n that is integral 0 to infinity e power negative x x to the power n minus 1 dx so this integral is gamma of n so therefore this integral can be written as gamma of n so hence we have proved that gamma of n plus 1 is equal to gamma i mean n multiplied with gamma of n for all n greater than 0 hence we have proved the recurrence relation of gamma function so hence we have proved the recurrence relation so hence proved and follow the next video to see property 2 and property 3 uh, where property 3 will be a corollary of this property that is we will be proving gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n factorial so kindly follow the next video to learn further properties on beta and gamma functions thank you